Hey everyone, Randy Watkins here on Son of a Breach. Today we have a very special Badge Life episode heading into Black Hat and DEF CON. Uh, if you're if you've been in the the security space for a while, you probably know about the badge scene. If you're fresh, uh, this may be new to you. Uh, badges are obviously something that are uh, given out at uh, security conferences, but a lot of folks don't realize the the amount of culture that goes into the badge life community and and how deep it actually runs. I mean, there's a lot of enthusiasts, hobbyists, professionals. I mean, uh, badge life is as actually a, a in and of itself, its own small kind of cult classic community. So uh, today, I'm I'm really stoked to bring on uh, Florida man, aka Jonathan Singer, to talk about the allure of badge life and how to get started in the community. So, Jonathan, thanks for joining us. Absolutely, thanks for having me, Randy. Yeah, and, and I definitely want to get started and talk about the badges. But for the listeners that are just listening to the Son of a Breach podcast, we are actually recording this on Zoom. So if you want to see the video, uh, you can head on over to Critical Start's website. GuidePoint might throw it up as well. We'll definitely have it on LinkedIn. But do check out the video because we're going to be going through uh, some, just a small portion of Jonathan's very extensive, extensive badge collection. So Jonathan, let's get started. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your security history and how you got started on the badge life scene? Absolutely. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm formally educated in, uh, you know, cybersecurity. This is kind of what I've been doing for the past decade plus of my life. Uh, I used to work in a data center and now I am a Simmons or practice lead at GuidePoint Security. Um, but something fun is I actually have no practical training in electrical engineering, circuitry, or any of the sort. I'm actually self-taught in a lot of this stuff. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, I go by Florida Man. I'm a Florida native, uh, and so shout out to uh, UCF uh, Knights. But um, besides that, you know, I'm, I'm heavily involved in our local OAS chapter um, and also the Besides Orlando Security Conference, which helped me, uh, you know, get enough uh, umph to to launch my first digital badge. Uh, and so it's a little bit of, of background on that. Of course, there's certs and stuff in there, but we're here to talk about hardware. Yeah, so I mean, talking about badge life, you said you've been in it for how long now? So I designed my first badge in 2013. Uh, and so, yeah, going on uh, eight, almost nine years now, if you include a lot of the research that went into it. Yeah, that's uh, quite a while to be part of it, but badge life actually goes back a, a, a bit before that. So, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, what is the history behind it? And where did the whole thing get started? Of course. And so, so kind of a, a brief primer on the history of badge life or even the concept of having something other than a piece of paper or plastic hanging on your neck, right? Um, let's, let's take a little time warp back here. We're going to jump back to DEF CON 14. And can you imagine we're already up to what, 30 this year? Right. And so, so in the early days of DEF CON, this is 2006, uh, DEF CON 14, um, there's an individual by the name of Joe Grand. And he is, uh, he, he comes up with this idea of why not have something fun for the badge. Uh, and at the time, uh, you know, it was, it was totally different, like I said, than a piece of paper or plastic. It was, it was something as simple as just a, a little circle circuit board with a bit of a cutout in the shape of the DEF CON skull. Um, but it had eyes that lit up. And this is this, you know, as rudimentary as it may seem today, this is something completely un, unseen at any conference up until then. Uh, and again, this is this is you know 16 years ago. So, so they they get started just because somebody wants it. I mean, every every conference has it, its official badge that shows, hey, you're welcome to be in the conference. You paid whatever. What are the purposes of the of these underground kind of third party badges? Well, so you got to remember the premise, right, is computers truly at their core are hardware. And we're so used to seeing software today, we're so used to being stuck in a monitor that we quickly forget about how the computer functions, right? And if you think back in the good old days of like ham radio, uh, for those that are in the military of comms, right, you start to have a, a real fundamental understanding of what is the underlying equipment that's taking place within this system. And so bringing back some of that, you know, uh, you know, circuitry and soldering and microchips and, you know, schematics and layouts and understanding that. And so 
that's uh, a lot of what what brings it to where it is today. And so it it has grown a lot since, right? If you know between DefCon fourteen of the the, the advent of the digital badge, right? Um, and it, and it's continued to mature and grow year after year after that. In fact, Joe Grand uh, retired after a couple of years, passed it off to Lo uh, Lost, and Lost Boy took that with some puzzles and some designs and ran that for a couple of years. He ended up retiring and passing that off to the next generation called Toy Makers, and Toy Makers. Uh, um, has made a couple badges since then uh, in the digital space for DEF CON. And again, that's just the DEF CON community. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I created our first uh, digital badge at B-Sides Orlando in 2013. Um, and so uh, th that was with seeing what was going on in other security conferences, other communities, and kind of just saying, well, we can do this too. So really the, the point of these more elaborate badges is an allusion to the history of where security comes from and saying, hey, we're traditionally looking at software and enterprise applications, but we can go back to the hardware level where everything started too. That's what it means to me, right? I know there was a time and a day where somebody sat me down and taught me how to use a soldering iron. And that has kind of stuck with me ever since. And uh, I think, you know, fundamentally, I think you don't, you can't truly understand computers and the security around them without understanding how they actually work at a hardware level. Yeah, so. that's that's super interesting, and uh, I know really a cool touch back to the roots of of security and computer science in general. Now, some of these badges, I mean, you said, hey, kind of started out by lighting up the eyes. Right, but I've, I've been to Black Hat, I've been to DEF CON, I've been to a lot of the conferences. That's certainly not where they've stopped. Uh, and I mean, some of these things have very elaborate puzzles. Some of them are huge. Some of them connect with other devices. They have Wi-Fi, they have Bluetooth. What is the market for these things to be purchased? How, I mean, aside from earning them, you know, by, you know, spoofing a badge or by winning a CTF, are people actually spending their money on, on these third-party badges? You know, they absolutely are. Uh, today, uh, you know, badging, having badges as a collection is, is a bit of a, a novelty, right? There is uh, a market to, to purchase them, whether that may be online, whether that may be in person at a conference, um, whether that badge that you get is from an indie community, from maybe a company that is designing a fun little toy or challenge. Um, you may be supporting an organization through your badge purchase purchase, or like in most cases, like we do at B-Sides Orlando, you get the badge as part of your entrance to the conference. So along with, you know, covering the cost of operations, you get this awesome piece of hardware that hopefully you enjoy, you have fun with, and you may learn something from it, right? Um, in fact, I've pulled out uh, from my collection here, I'm going to switch over to the overhead cam. And so this uh, device that I have here on screen, this is actually the first uh, badge that I ever made. And so this is the original, uh, you know, 2013 B-Sides Orlando uh, badge. And what's funny is that this is the fifth iteration and we'll get into some of that stuff later. Um, but we gave these out to every single attendee. And, um, you know, this was your, you know, identification that you were a paid attendee to the conference. Um, and so that was kind of our take on it. And we wanted to make it so that the badge was its own challenge and its own hackable concept in itself. Now, what does that badge do? Uh, when you place a nine volt in uh, this receptacle here, the screen that's uh, kind of mounted on top of it uh, actually lights up and has a, a full animation. And underneath the screen, which is removable, is kind of the brains of the operation. This chip is reprogrammable. There is a little header here, basically a point at which you can connect it to the computer over USB. And you can give it different uh, code and different firmware to perform different animations. I believe this one had uh, something of a little like um like a I think it was a, a nyan cat was the meme of the day uh, back in in 2013. So I remember the good old days. Uh, yeah. So th that that was your first the first badge you created. Yes. <laughs> now there's there's a lot of folks that are. Um, <laughs> Black Hat has gotten a reputation as being corporate sponsored now, and and DEF CON is now the the actual uh, kind of uh, convention that the more tech interested crowd goes to. And and I know that there are some corporate sponsors of badges. Is there any concern that those corporate sponsors, um, you know, may dilute the the smaller badge uh, creator, the the badge hobbyist? You know, I I don't think so. I think. Um... 
you know, building hardware should be fun for everyone. Uh, you know, one thing that we've always tried to do historically with B-Sides Orlando is make it so that you get a kit, uh, something that is assemblable. Think of it almost like your own version of uh, some kind of blocks that you put together, right? And we try to have a soldering village and you take the pieces that we give you and you go to the soldering village and you learn about how to assemble these things and how it works um, at a very low level. And this gives the opportunity for people to learn something new, to, to be interactive and have fun with it. Now, when it comes to different organizations and different groups, um, you know, again, I think, I think hardware should be for everybody. It's a lot of fun, right? Um, there was a, a, a time and a day when modding game consoles was a thing. And uh, the, the, you know, just it was very uh, intimidating to open up an Xbox or a PlayStation at the time and to solder something to the motherboard and not really know or understand fully what you were doing. And uh, even I think that level of introduction to getting into hardware and, and soldering and, and messing with things, right, is extremely important. And so, uh, you know, whether a badge is from a conference, uh, from a community, uh, or even from a company just trying to, to get in on the fun and, and share. I think really, I think it's for everybody. So which of the, uh, I guess, the more corporate or the larger <laughs> companies, who's really doing a cool badge? You know, um, there there's definitely some cool ones out there. And so I have a couple here that I'll throw up on the cam. And so this one right here was given out at Black Hat a couple of years ago from a company called WatchGuard. And the way you earned this batch, right? And, and companies understand you can't just go and necessarily try to profiteer off these things is the way you earn this is you participated in a CTF online. And after getting a certain score, you can actually go over to their booth and the challenge continued on this badge. And why? Because it's actually a Raspberry Pi. There's a mini computer running on this entire thing hanging off of your neck. Um, another really cool badge that I have over here in my collection comes from the company Hacker Warehouse. And, um, and so this uh, badge was put together just kind of something fun. They saw what was happening in the badge community and said, you know, maybe we can add to the creativity, maybe we can add to the excitement and enjoyment. And so they put together this fun badge and it's got a number of different Wi-Fi tools on it to help, um, you know, different uh, auditing or spoofing and, and just fun things like that. It, it wanted to you know, take a little bit of creativity and give it to people in the form of um, this meme here. <laughs> so uh, those are those are great and and definitely recognizable, right? I mean, they're they're very large, flashy. Uh, what are some of the other more, I guess, coveted badges uh, that you see? Whether it's it's uh, you know a pricey or it's um, you know, it holds some clout. To it. <laughs> yeah. So here's an example of one more on, we'll call it on the pricey side. And so this comes from a community. And if you, um, if you're watching online, you'll notice maybe this looks a bit of like a wrench. Uh, and in fact it is. Um, but what's interesting is on this end is an OBD port. So this badge comes from the uh, car hopping, hacking village at DEF CON. And this particular tool can be used to communicate uh, with the CAN bus over the OBD port found in all modern vehicles. And so this is uh, the, the car hacking village regularly does get involved in making a badge every year. And so this just happens to be the one from the most recent uh, DEF CON uh, that they participated in. Um, and then another example of a community getting involved um, is this one right here. And so this, uh, Fairly large and fairly heavy badge actually comes from the blue team village and similar to some other ones we've seen this one also is running a Raspberry Pi and has a full battery pack on board. And so this was part of their challenges where you could uh, play different games in this and solve different uh, things and yes it does have, you know, capabilities of communicating over different protocols. Um, but uh, you know, these there's nothing cheap about you know getting into this and, and building these kinds of very elaborate systems, uh, and so sometimes that cost may be passed on to the purchaser. Other times the cost reflects um, a particular activity, a party, an event, or even a charity that the organization is supporting. 
So how much does a badge like that cost? Uh, not to produce, but how much does a, a consumer pay for these badges? If you have somebody who, you know, first year going to DEF CON, they're really stoked. They want to get into this badge life community. Uh, how much should they expect to pay for some of these badges? Well, first off, think about the badge that you're getting at the door. Right. And I always say that's going to be the most important one because that's what lets you stay at the conference. Right. Uh, so there is your first badge right away. And I just want to remind everybody that badges don't necessarily have to be circuit boards. Right. I, again, I don't want it to be a piece of plastic or a piece of paper, but I've seen some very cool badges um, and some that I have in my collection uh, that are made of acrylic, laser cut acrylic, or uh, DEF CON has done historically some very interesting badges like titanium. Um, and a record. Yeah, right? that and giant record that you had to wear around your neck all weekend. <laughs> exactly. And so that just goes to show that badges necessarily don't have to be a computer. While I totally enjoy them being circuit boards and fully functional computers hanging around your neck, um, they, they don't necessarily have to be, but they can honestly range anywhere from a couple bucks, you know, uh, to well into the hundreds. It really depends on the amount of work and, and time and effort put into them, the type of hardware that they're using and the investment behind the scenes to make it a reality. And then along with what is the initiative that that they're supporting, right? What is the bigger picture? Uh, at the Florida Man Parties, uh, we try to host a wonderful get together to allow people from the state of Florida to meet and uh, you know introduce themselves to each other that maybe they've met online, maybe they go to different universities. And so the, the financial backing of the Florida Man Badge helps host that event to bring individuals together and hopefully, you know, create opportunities, start companies uh, and, you know, make friends for life. So your badges uh, that you create, you, you made your first one back in 2013 uh, for B-Sides Orlando. How many have you created since? So since then, oh, I got to count a couple here, but um, I believe I've made about six or seven. And I have a couple here. In fact, I'll throw up the, the overhead cam and for those viewing it online, um, this right here. And so I mentioned my first badge ever. And, and you'll you, one thing you'll notice, at least if you're seeing the video, is that my first badge was very square. It has very sharp edges. Um, it's very rectangular, very, there's nothing fluid about it, right? And so over time um, of research, learning, observing, speaking to others, um, you know, I start to, to realize that I can do graphics, I can do rounded edges, I can do unique shapes, I can do multiple layers, right? And this gives the opportunity. And so, um, you know, we can get really creative uh, and really play into some of the themes here. And so I have some badges from, you know, B-sides uh, over the years where we've talking, you know, 2017, 2018, um, that have grown in size, grown in shape, grown in complexity. Uh, and this is just a couple of my B-sides uh, examples. When it comes to the Florida Man project, uh, that's a, a whole nother thing. Um, and so when I get into making badges, it's all about you know, what is uh, something that's going to be fun? What's something that's going to be functional? Uh, what's something that people are going to really enjoy, take home, want to talk and, and share about? Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely, let's see, six, seven, eight, yeah, about, about seven or eight different ones, not even including, um, the, what we call add-ons or, or additional modules, which is what these little, um, headers are here, uh, that allow you to add on additional, um, components, uh, standoffs. And so, uh, badges have become modular and you can add to them even. So even our badges have gone microservice. They yeah. absolutely have. Tell us about the conch shell. So there's a you have a badge. It looks like a conch shell. It's yellow. It's got some stuff on it. What what does this conch shell do? Sure. Um, so this is the DEF CON 26 uh, Florida Man badge. Um, there was one prior to this that was an alligator head. <laughs> that was a Wi-Fi enabled light controller. Um, and so what I have here uh, on camera is a couple of different conch shells. The one in green is an example of the prototyping process where I start out with an idea and I kind of arrange it in somewhat of a fashion that I'm interested in just to prove that the electronics work as intended. Once these concepts 
are functional and that I don't, maybe there's an error or something that I need to move around or something that I need to adjust, then you move on to the, to the production modules. So you asked, what does this do? This actually is a breathalyzer uh, in the shape of a conch shell. And so if you can imagine holding it up and blowing into this sensor located here at the top and uh, along the bottom of the, the shell is actually the one to 10 indicator scale. And I'll tell you, this is a big hit in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. So you went through and, and prototyped that out uh, and then came up with a, a production design, ordered the pieces. How long does that process take when you're going through, hey, I have an idea all the way through to now I have 100, 200, 300 production badges? You know what? And that's that's really the crazy part is some of these uh, I'll come up with an idea about a year in advance. Uh, from uh, the DEF CON conference um, or any conference in general of something that I think would be really cool. And then um, it can take anywhere from, from, you know, six to eight months really of iterations of testing, of acquisition of parts, of communicating in the late night hours with China and the manufacturing facilities. Cause you gotta keep in mind, China's 12 hours essentially off from us, uh, at least over here in the East coast. Uh, so I'm on an opposite schedule of them. Uh, it's not uncommon for me to be up at two, three in the morning, uh, trying to message a factory about a particular component or part that uh, I'm having trouble with. And so, you know, considering all of those different things, yeah, easily uh, can take up most of the year. And so um, just an example of that, the conch shell was one of the, the simpler badges when it comes to functionality. Um, you know, at a, at a really high level, all it's doing is measuring uh, the output of an alcohol sensor and converting that to what we call like a VU meter, essentially think of it like the volume, right? How loud is the sensor? And that's your scale of one to 10 that's gonna be lit up by the lights. Um, luckily, I only had a, a couple iterations of that, but uh, also what I have here in front of us is the Florida Man 2019 badge. And this has multiple variations. And so what I have here on camera, is you'll see um, one of the original ones. And like I said, you know, I'll start out with a very rudimentary uh, form, very square, very basic, just a proof of a concept. And you can even see here, I have soldered wires hanging off of it because of during prototyping, I had to, to measure different pins and make sure things were working as expected. But you'll notice something between the badges here is that there's a little bit more on each one. And so we start back on here with version one prototype. Then we move to a version two prototype where I finally get a screen on, where I get lights on it, where I get a big header, right? Which are pins that allow me to connect up to some kind of diagnostic device to, to see what's going on here. Then we start to move into our final form, but we're still not there yet. This one also has a diagnostic header. It has all kinds of extra components added to it to allow me to test, confirm and verify that it's functioning exactly the way I want it. And then we finally move on into the final production model. And so this particular run was multiple months for each of these variations. So I have four variations in front of me leading all the way up to the production one. Um, and this was a, a very long project. Imagine, you know, spending late nights designing this, then collecting the pieces, then shipping the design, well, emailing the designs off to a Chinese fabrication company. They take time to manufacture and build this, and then they have to mail it back to you, right? And then uh, once you get it, then you have to hand assemble. And so it may be hard to see on camera, but these parts are about, you know, the size of a grain of rice. And, you know, I don't have big machinery, uh, what we call like a pick and place, which is a robotic arm that places all the individual components. I do this all by hand uh, during the prototyping phase to make sure that this is exactly what I need it to be, that it does what I expect from it. Um, the finals though, are manufactured by robot though. Okay, so you're not making by hand 200 badges. You're, you're building out the badge the way you want, and then you say, hey, replicate this 200 times. Absolutely. The first few, right, during prototyping, they are being built by hand. Yes, all those tiny little grains of rice. 
um, you know, it, it takes a lot of, of good tools, uh, patience, time, um, and then hopefully good eyesight for a while too, uh, to be able to pull some of this off. Um, you know, I, I've, I've collected a variety of different pieces of hardware to help me, um, you know, perform some of these uh, tiny operations. So, so when you're going through and you're, you're soldering all the, the little pieces on, uh, you're kind of just doing code checks. Uh, I mean, wh at what point in time do you uh, do you really need to start opening up a, a custom communication dialogue with somebody over in China to develop those circuit boards? I mean, are are there are those pieces something I can go to a store and buy to get started, or do I already have to start establishing relationships overseas to import the pieces? Yeah, you know, supply chain is a big deal, especially today. There's actually a global chip shortage. That's just a reality of the time we live in. But in general, you can't just walk into Radio Shack anymore and pick mm -hmm. up a, a resistor and a microchip. Um, for those that are lucky enough to live in a state with Micro Center, you can. Um, but uh, but here in Florida, uh, we don't have a lot of those opportunities anymore. And so, um, you know, there's there's great resources domestically to acquire parts. I uh, get them in what are called reels, essentially consider it like a movie reel, like a spool of tiny little components, thousands of them at a time. And, uh, and, and I have to kind of break that stuff apart. Um, and so you can buy them um, really simply at, at most domestic parts companies like Mauser and DigiKey and Adafruit. Um, but then overseas, when you're into the production mode, uh, yes, you want to have an established relationship with one of these companies that's fabricating and manufacturing your badge. That way they're sourcing the parts, they understand what your goals are. Um, and if there's issues along the way, they're going to communicate it to you and help find fixes too. Now, in a, in a second, I, I want to just start kind of going over some of your more fun badges, because I, I know you have bags and bags and boxes of, of different badges that do different things. But uh, being self-taught, I mean, what resources are out there for other folks who say, you know what, this is interesting. I know you do a lot on your YouTube channel, but where did you get started? And then where can people pick up your, uh, your information as well? Absolutely. You know, um, like I said, uh, I was very fortunate to have a, a great upbringing that exposed me to um, computers, to, to soldering, to microchips and circuit boards, and I've always had a passion for it. But what really helped me launch into that first badge um, back in 2013 was YouTube, really. I, I started watching YouTube videos, and one of my favorite channels to watch is called EEV Blog, the Electronic Engineering V Blog or video blog. And it is just, it taught me how to do my first layout, how to make my first circuit board, how to do my first, you know, microchip soldering. Like it was just completely uh, amazing to be able to learn from YouTube university essentially. Um, but from there, uh, you know, uh, having discovered the Badge Life community that was only, you know, just in existence as of a couple of years ago, where all of these other hobbyists like myself come together and share uh, as a community about parts and, and techniques and manufacturers and suppliers um, and group buys, right, and how to just acquire things. And so being a part of a community of knowledge and, and people that are willing to teach, share and, and help in any way possible. Uh, but you kind of have to start out with uh, in yourself, you have to bring something to the table to share. And so I had uh, this experience and, and, and these, you know, badges to, to kind of say, well, these, this is what I've done. Um, and I'd like to share what I've learned. And I'd love to hear what you've learned along the way. So YouTube, EEV blog, um, I, I mean, your YouTube channel, I know you do a lot of uh, like tutorials. So what's it, what's uh, the Florida Man YouTube channel? Yeah, you can also just find me on YouTube by searching my full name, Jonathan Singer. Uh, it's what I run it as right now. I haven't come up with a clever name yet. Uh, but the whole idea is I, you know, share a little bit about soldering my passion for cybersecurity and hardware. Uh, on that channel. And I try to upload uh, interesting things uh, throughout the year. Uh, I'll continue to upload more about badges on there too. And just also some other channels that I, I still continue to learn from today. Stuff like Contextual Electronics, BigClive.com, Marco Reps, Great Scott, Vault Log. Uh, I mean, 
I can, I can send you over the list that we can post in the, in the show notes for other people to look at, but there are just so many great resources out there that can just help anybody that is curious, is interested to, to really embrace this hobby. Yeah. And, and for anybody who is in Florida that wants to attend uh, the Florida man parties, they're going to be at DEF CON. Where do they find you? They can find me on Twitter at my full name also at Jonathan Singer. Um, and also information is uh, sporadically posted to the website, floridaman.party. <laughs> floridaman.party. That's, that's who a, would have thought it's a TLD. I, what country is that a TLD for? Party land. <laughs> Par, party, party mania. <clears throat> Perfect. Exactly. Uh, Jonathan, definitely appreciate all of the, the insights and the resources uh, if you're listening to the podcast, I mean, we'll, we'll play the following, um, you know, the, what Jonathan and I talk about afterwards, but I would really encourage you to check out the video uh, because now I just want to let Jonathan talk about some of his favorite batches, some of the most unique, some of the, uh, the more popular ones. Yeah, uh, th this is about to get real good, but I'll do my best to describe what I've got on screen here. And so to kind of kick things off, you know, I, I've been talking a lot about the concept of community, right? And one of the really cool badges that I've seen over the years um, was this badge that I have here. Uh, and if you can guess what state this is in the shape of, uh, like I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's Wisconsin. Yep, looks like a Wisconsin to me. <laughs> and so if you can imagine an entire circuit board in the shape of the state of Wisconsin, right? And so that's very creative. But what I like most about this board is that it's actually a multi-layer. And so what happened here is they decided to have not just a circuit board, but have a multiple layer construction. And so this is a, a 3D object essentially in the state of Wisconsin that was put together um, by obviously a, a Wisconsin uh, engineer of their own. But what I like about this is it shows uh, kind of like a community pride, right? And I have a lot of pride in, in what we do with Florida Man um, and things of that nature. And to meet another state enthusiast that is also doing circuit boards, that's also building a community where they live to meet and find other individuals that uh, are interested in this stuff just like them. It really means a lot. And the fact that they were willing to share one of their Wisconsin uh, badges with me through the, the Badge Life community uh, was just really meaningful. And I thought it was super cool. Um, and so that's a, uh, a very awesome uh, little badge I have here. Um, another badge that I have is um, from uh, more of an indie badge. And so what I have here on the screen is this is actually a uh, little puffer fish, right? Um, but it's not just any puffer fish. This actually uh, represents a particular uh, symbol in the computer world. This is uh, the mascot um, for a variety of you know, Linux Unix enthusiasts. And so what's really cool about this badge is if you can imagine this tiny little microchip that I'm displaying here, which in all reality has got to be no bigger than a penny, right? Is an entire Linux operating system. So um, this particular badge here is essentially running uh, Linux with Wi-Fi powered off of double A's hanging off of your neck. And so I found that this one was a very cool badge in the sense that most badges today are based off of what we call um, some kind of um, uh, embedded circuit system. Uh, they run some form of C code that is continuously operating. Uh, maybe the chip is like an Arduino, right? Um, or something, you know, a variation of that. Um, but this is very different, right? Those are what we call real-time operating systems. This is actually a Linux uh, and the operating system of entirely running. So the CPU, the, the RAM, the, the, the essentially the, the disk, the SSD, it's all right here, plus Wi-Fi. Uh, and so this is, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, it, it's it's running a router operating system, mm -hmm. uh, and so this is this is definitely really cool. Along with the ones that are Raspberry Pis, I think it's a little bit more conventional. This is an excellent uh, challenge of building a board. So, Jonathan, let me ask you. <clears throat> I mean, with with Raspberry Pis and the different add-ons for Raspberry Pis. I and mean, it's it would be relatively easy just to stick a pie to a screen and and then put some circuit board around it and call it a badge. Are there any purists that 
you know, kind of stay away from the the uh, essentially tiny computer space yeah. where they still want to operate strictly via chip? Yeah, absolutely. And so you'll see a variety of different concepts, right? Um, for instance, the Florida Man conch shell has no smarts in it. And again, it's it's simply what we call a voltage divider and, and logic. Uh, the idea is how much is being returned from the sensor and that we basically turn into a, a value between one and 10. Uh, this badge I have here from B-Sides Orlando uh, 2018 ha also has no smarts in it. It's a, it's a series of resistors, capacitors, and transistors to create a marquee animation uh, along these LEDs around the perimeter as shown here. All right, and so your badge doesn't necessarily need to be an embedded computer of the sense. It can actually just be something fun that is animating, that is interesting, that's engaging, um, you know, that, that has some form factor of interest to it. Uh, another badge I have here, this is called the Hacker Hotkey. And this is from KernelCon of this year, 2021. And if you look very closely, yes, these are keys. So this is a mini programmable keyboard um, that plugs into USB. And as part of their conference, these were pre-programmed with strings that were used to interact with the online component. Uh, and so you could then reprogram because they shared the code online. And so you can convert all of these to macros. My goal is I'm gonna turn this into a little mini stream deck of my own uh, so I can use it during my productions. And so this is a really cool function of a badge uh, way beyond after the conference, right? It's great to wear this on your neck and, and, and it's definitely a very cool, you know, uh, trinket, but to have a function after the conference that goes well year round, that's, that's something that just means a lot to me. And it really kind of strikes my heart, right? Um, another badge that I have here on screen, this is the giant, and I mean, it's, it's, it's the size of my hand here. This is the Monero badge um, from a couple years back. And uh, for those that are into cryptocurrency, yes, Monero, like just like the coin. Um, and they uh, hosted a party and these were the badges to, to get into that party and to participate. But what this badge is doing is they kind of went for that biggest wow factor. Um, you know, when it comes to the price of a badge, it, it, there's two major factors. It's the size, right? So how much, um, you know, area is your badge taking up? Because that means more circuit board has to be made. And additionally, how many components, right? And this is uh, easily several thousand components uh, across the top and bottom of this board. And so this is no cheap feat by any means, but it's extremely bright. I mean, if you wanted to have a blinky challenge, this is probably the blinkiest of the blinkies. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, for those who aren't watching the video, it looks like a, a little mouse head, like a dead mouse uh, with the Monero symbol on the ears. And then the entire face of it is one big square, looks like a 20 by 20 matrix of little LED cells. It's more like, 40 by 40 and they're really, full, full yeah. RGB color also. Oh, really? It's really intense. I didn't want to light it up because it would, it would scare the camera. Um, and then, uh, and then I mentioned something earlier about those add-ons, right? The, the mini scene. And so this right here is a fun little badge. If you notice, this is our favorite little Pac-Man, but it, he has a speaker. And if I'll play him near the microphone, And so this little, um, so this isn't even really a badge or an add-on, it's actually a pin. And you can attach this to your shirt or your backpack. And so now we've even you know, expanded into the concept of pins being circuit boards um, that are programmable and can have all kinds of fun little functions. To go along with the theme, this is a really cool uh, Kirby in pink um add-on and so this right here this six pin header is kind of the modern universal standard for badge add-ons and you can see that it's a very simple modular component here oh um, what do those add-ons do so add-ons can do a variety of things this particular one lights up um he has a couple of cheeks that light up and his feet light up and you can uh 
if you uh, kind of do a little analysis of the back of the board, you'll see what we call LEDs or light emitting diodes, essentially, you know, things that, that light up today. Um, and so that's this particular function, but they can do a variety of different things. Um, I have some very interesting uh, add-ons that um, make noise, they, they light up. I have, uh, there's ones that are different types of sensors and, and they can interact back with the badge or they can operate independently and just take power from the badge to function. Um, you know, other cute little things is we can do designs. And so this kind of gets into a corgi. Uh, but there's a light over his butt because everybody loves corgi butts. Um, and that's all it does is it lights up. But this goes to show kind of how this has really turned into kind of an art scene. And you can see a variety of different badges here. And just to kind of illustrate, you know, there's lots of different colors, right? We have pink badges, which for the longest time, getting a pink circuit board was actually very difficult. Most people, when you think of a circuit board, what do you think of? You think green, of green right? You think of basic. But the reality is you can make circuit boards virtually out of any color today. Um, and same thing goes for the ink. So the art is an entirely separate concept when it comes to these badges. And so you'll see I, this is a red um, board with a white silkscreen ink. And this is a yellow board with a black silkscreen ink, you know, and, and kind of everything mixed in between with that. Um, here's a funny one because we all know that it's pronounced uh, GIF, um, but just to just to remind everybody in case they were confused. And then one of the first um, add-ons that I ever made to a company was this mini state of Florida um, in a gator skin where the Lake Okeechobee is in the shape of, shape of a heart. That's the little lake in the state of Florida. And it has a little light behind it and an alligator. <laughs> Um, and so getting into the add-ons was also a lot of fun to, to kind of build up uh, from this. And so I know I have a very full overhead cam here, but I promise this is just a small fraction of the collection that I built over the years. You know, there's, there's many communities out there that are building really cool stuff that I, you know, I haven't even seen yet. And I think everybody should really just look into look into this and figure out how to do it on your own. I don't think it's a challenge too grand for anybody to, to accomplish. And, and badges don't even have to be, I mean, chips or anything like that. I mean, you, you kind of said earlier, uh, the, the vinyl record around your neck at, at DEF CON was a, a badge one year. And you, you showed me one the other day that was uh, just acrylic and it was a deodorant holder. And then you, you kind of step it up into the blinky badges, uh, which is the next kind of simplest step forward all the way to, you know, now you got a, a whole Linux OS hanging around your neck that you can uh, plug into any terminal and get started. What, what tools are necessary for somebody who says, you know what, it's interesting. Uh, I, I definitely like to, to dink around with circuits and, and soldering. Uh, what do I need to have to get started? You know, that's a great question. And I'll tell you what I mentioned earlier, I've, I've kind of assembled quite the collection and I can't fit it all here on screen, um, but I'll show you a couple of the main, you know, components that I think everybody who is either getting started in this or is kind of established should really be considering. And so the first thing first is I think you need a, just a reliable voltmeter, right? And what I have here, this isn't the most expensive. This isn't, you know, the top notch, but I'll tell you what, it works and it's reliable and the batteries last a long time. And so you're going to be using a voltmeter constantly to probe, to measure, to read different components, to help you diagnose what's going on and verify that your board is working the way you expect it to. The second off is going to be a reliable soldering iron. And so the one I particularly have here is called the TS-100. Um, it's, I've had it for quite a while. Uh, it just continues to kick butt. What I like most about this particular one is you can either plug it into the wall or I actually have an adapter for a battery pack and makes this a mobile soldering iron. And so you might catch me in a hotel room in Vegas with this on a battery pack, repairing a badge, right? Um, and so this is just one example, but but I do have three different soldering irons. This is just kind of my go-to. Um, I also have the uh, the trusty blue Heiko that many people may have seen online. Uh, and I also have some other variations of some Chinese KSK knockoffs, essentially we call open source soldering irons, right? Who would have thought soldering irons run firmware today? Um, 
the the next best thing is you need a reliable solder right and solder comes in so many different chemical variations um but uh although it may not be the best uh i i really i still can't kick leaded solder leaded solder it just it just works. It is, it is just reliable. It is clean uh, when it comes to the soldering aspect and the connectivity. And so I always go with a great brand of good leaded solder. I use Kester, um, but really uh, you just, this is something you don't want to cheap out on um, because that's what's literally holding your components in place. Beyond that, from there, uh, I have an entire soldering uh, and workshop station off screen here. Uh, I know from my background, you can already tell there's lots going on. So imagine it getting crazier. Um, but uh, I have, like I mentioned, three different soldering irons. I have a hot air station, which is essentially a hot air dryer, uh, but handheld. And it gets uh, very hot, hundreds of degrees and it blows hot air across the top of a circuit board to, to melt that solder and allow me to remove larger components. Mm -hmm. um, so having a rework and a hot airflow station is really important. Some of the other things I also have is a digital microscope. And so it's a, a large screen that has a, a lit surface that I can place the components on and I can magnify that. It even allows me to record, which is nice when I'm making videos. That's awesome. Uh, Jonathan, I mean, fantastic stuff. This is great. Um, I love the, the, the culture that goes behind it. I mean, security in and of itself is so eccentric, uh, and there's a lot of folks from all different walks of life that are, uh, you know, nerds or they're executives, but they used to be nerds. And I think everybody wants to tie back to something, uh, that really symbolizes, uh, the the uniqueness of the security culture and and badges definitely give us a way to do that uh, and and really kind of create that sense of community. So uh, thank you very much for walking us yeah. through the collection. And and I just want to you know get on that. Uh, just the other day, I was speaking with a, a business executive in my area who mentioned that they were um, soldering projects with their children. And I immediately said, well, let me mail you out a couple of extra kits. And I'm going to send it over to you. And so it's gone beyond that. It's not just for us nerds, really. Uh, it, is, it is for families. It's for kids. It's for everybody uh, to just get in on the fun. We really encourage it. Like I said, I got started when I was really young. Uh, and so I think everybody should have an opportunity to play in the space. Yeah, and it's a, a definitely a great activity for kids. Keep them busy, uh, fine motor skills, logic. I mean, there's a lot that goes into building those badges along with creativity. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking for ways to inspire your your kids, you know, uh, teens, whatever, um, grab them a, a soldering iron, a, a voltmeter, and a, a couple of chips to play around with, and let them see what they yeah. can do. And, and the reality of it too, is I don't do all of this on my own. Let me tell you, I have a lot of help behind the scenes, right? Whether it's across the Badge Life community with all kinds of crazy questions, um, whether it's support from my wife, uh, me getting up in the middle of the night uh, and, and she just loves telling other people about the crazy circuit boards that I make. I, 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 he doesn't just build computers like you put them together, like most people think. No, he builds them from the circuit board up. Um, but also, you know, I have lots of friends that help me out with this stuff. You know, Florida Man, for instance, couldn't be um, done without uh, my buddy Joe Haxalot and InfoSecondOn, you know, helping with art, helping me with programming, uh, putting up with my craziness, right? And so a badge is not just something that symbolizes an individual, it symbolizes a community uh, and the people that that badge represents. Well, thanks for uh, giving us a peek into the community and uh, hopefully this inspires others to join. So, uh, you know, if you're interested, check them out on Twitter, Florida Man, check out Jonathan Singer on YouTube. Uh, and if you're going to DEF CON, uh, hit them up there. I'll be there as well. So hopefully we'll see you out there. Safe travels. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, DEF CON 30 this year. Absolutely. Please say hi if you see me in the halls. We'll see you there, Jonathan. Sounds great.